What's up, yo? Big Cat 305 here. Today is 4th of July, America's birthday. I am such a huge American history buff, so I thought, what better to make than mac and cheese, right? Yankee Doodle, right? <laughs> I love it. Uh, there's a little controversy. Was it the Italians that invented it? Was it Thomas Jefferson? I'm not sure. Comment down below and let me know what you think. Either way, Americans love macaroni and cheese. So today we are making fried mac and cheese bites on the Blackstone. I am looking so forward to this. So if you're new to the channel, what we do here is try to simplify the cooking process and just make it easy and fun. So make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, ring that notification bell. And if you're a current subscriber, thank you for all your support. Keep hitting those thumbs up and commenting down below. Everybody, let's get cooking. All right, so we start off boiling some water to cook our macaroni. Just follow the instructions on the box. Uh, just get the regular 16 ounce, the, the elbows, the small ones. Don't get the big ones. The small ones work much better. Um, and then uh, once you get that water in there boiled up nicely, add the macaroni. I like to add some oil as well as about a tablespoon of salt. Gives it that flavor and just makes everything better so that's it just follow the instructions i believe it's six minutes for uh for this particular uh box and that will get it al dente which is what you want because you're going to cook it more on the griddle as well so there we go it's al dente we take it off that's what it looks like great now next up we're going to make our roux and this is going to be our roux for our cheese gravy cheese sauce it's not gravy cheese sauce <laughs> so you add a couple tablespoons of butter and we're going to add a tablespoon of all-purpose flour here we're going to mix this up not for too long we're going to make a blonde roux because we want this this uh, cheese sauce to be nice and and light in color so a lot of roux you, you're going to you're going to do this for about 15, 20 minutes, but here we just do this for about four or five minutes and that's it. Darkens up a little bit, but it's still pretty light. You can see there. Looking good. And this is going to thicken up our cheese sauce. So we're going to add about four cups of milk, but not all at once. Just a little bit at a time. About a cup at a time, probably three quarters to a cup at a time. You don't have to measure it out exactly but you want to add a little bit mix it up get that um, that flour butter mixture incorporated into the milk you're going to boil it down a little bit and then you're going to add some more same thing add some more you're just going to keep doing that until you get a nice creamy sauce so i add a little bit more flour here because i didn't I, I realized i'm cooking a lot of pasta uh, that 16 ounces of pasta actually is going to be a lot, so I figured, you know what, we need a little bit more. So I added, added another tablespoon of flour as well as another tablespoon of butter. This early in the process, it did not hurt. No big deal. We just mix it in there. You can see it thickening up real quick. And that's it. Time to add some more milk. So when it gets to that texture, you're going to add some more milk, another cup or so. and then stir it in you want to stay on top of this you do not want to walk away for more than 30 seconds because this will burn really quickly uh it'll it'll trust me stay on top of this roux here uh you're going to work this for about a good eight minutes or so and once you get it to where it looks pretty close to where you want to be Remember, it's going to keep cooking, so you don't want to get it too, too thick. So it's, it's still pretty thin there. And at that point, you, you want to add your spices, some salt and pepper. That's it. Nothing fancy here. Just some salt, about a tablespoon, and some pepper, about a, a teaspoon, I'd say. And there's our base for our cheese sauce. Now, the fun part. Time to add the cheese. So we mix those spices together and we're going to add this creamy melt 
cheddar cheese. <laughs> the whole bag. That's right. All the ingredients will be in the description below. Um, but yeah, that when I saw that, I'm like, oh, I got to do this one. This looks really good. It's, a, it's like two or three different types of cheddars and cream cheese in there as well. And you can see it's already starting to mix nicely in there. And again, stay on top of this sauce. Do not be an absentee cook. You want to be there for the whole thing till we are ready to for the next step. So it's looking good. It's looking great. But I want a little more traditional. So I got some, actually I got some Velveeta cheese packs. And I decided to dump one in. <laughs> you know what? It is so good. And honestly, you could just cook just a box of Velveeta cheese or Kraft cheese from the box. It's going to be just as good for sure. No question. I just like to do it a little more homemade with my own cheeses that I like to incorporate and make the roux and make it a little, you know, my own style. But if you just want to do an easy box, follow the instructions, hey, that's awesome too. And I decided to go for a second pack of the cheese, the Velveeta. So you can see it's getting the color now from the Velveeta for sure. And it is looking great. Mix it up. Show you a little bit of uh, the texture we're looking for. Look at that. Oh, that is perfect right there. Now, remember, we're making this not to serve right now. We're making this to put it in a tray and then stick it in the fridge. So there's our macaroni elbows that are done. We're going to stick those in the pan, mix them all up with the sauce. And you could serve this right now. I mean, this. I mean, if that's what you're doing, but that's all we're doing. So, but if you were just making homemade mac and cheese, this is how you would do it. And trust me, <laughs> I had some. It's really good. So you just want to mix it all up, get it nice and incorporated. Look at that. I mean, come on, that looks beautiful. So, next step, we are going to stick these in a, in actually two Tupperware containers. You can use a 9 by 13 um, baking pan, uh, casserole pan, whatever you want. I decided to use a couple of Tupperware trays like this. It just happened to be about the right size. And they're airtight when I, when I snap the tops on. I put them in the fridge. And good to go. So we are going to stick these in the fridge and let them sit overnight and here's what they look like the next day all right boom just like that leftover mac and cheese i did spray the bottom of these with a little spray oil i didn't show you uh, just so they come out nicely but you want to take your knife and go around the edges just to get them out uh, you don't want them sticking and falling apart that's the last thing you want you want to keep these nice and congealed together um, and the plan is go around the outside just like so and then we're going to turn it over and basically plop it down and kind of pop it out of there and boom just like that it comes out perfect and then you want to decide how big of the bites you want I decided to go like one inch cubes so I went down the middle and then I'm going to go left side and right side again in half. So four columns, if you will. And you can see they're nice and um, compact. They're not going anywhere. Looking great. I'm very excited at this point. And we're going to just, again, cut now the rows across just like so one two three four five so it's actually six rows across by four so 24 mac and cheese bites just in this one tupperware and here's what one looks like 
So that's it. And the cool thing is you can stick them right back in the same container because it all sticks together. And you want to keep these cold until the last second, until you are ready to drop them into the oil. So I put them back in the fridge at this point. And then outside the workstation. On the right there, we have just regular all-purpose flour. I added some, uh, some cayenne pepper there. We have four eggs scrambled, and then we have some panko breadcrumbs, and that's our um, our station there. And then we've got about uh, maybe four or five tablespoons of butter in that cast iron skillet on top of the blackstone, and that's it. We're going to heat this up, and I'm going to speed this up, this process here of me dredging, going from the flour to the egg to the... Panko breadcrumbs. Now, while I'm doing this, you might be asking, why are you cooking on a cast iron skillet on top of the Blackstone? Have you ever fried food inside of your house? Do you know what your house smells like after you are done frying food? It smells like a big old fry station. <laughs> so that's why I like to do it outside. That's number one. Number two, you can take this camping with you. You can make this mac and cheese ahead of time. You can cut it up into cubes. You can freeze it for two or three months ahead of time. Uh, you can do it in the fridge and leave it in the fridge for three or four days and then take it camping if you want. And imagine doing these cubes, these uh, mac and cheese bites camping. Wow, you will be a hero, trust me. So just another option for camping and another just to show the versatility of this 22-inch Blackstone. So next up. It is time to drop them in the oil. You want to get this oil to a medium to medium high heat. All right. Um, that's like 375 to 400, I would say. And then you can hear the sizzle. That's what you want to hear when you drop them in. I could have had this a little bit warmer, but it all turned out okay. You can adjust. You just turn it up a little bit. And I decided, eventually, I decided to turn on the right side as well, just to kind of give it a little more oomph, um, a little more heat. So that's it. We get we have, we have six in the pan. I make another six real quick. We're dropping those in. And they are frying up. And the, the cool thing about these, they're cubes. So you fry, turn, fry, turn, fry, turn. And you just stay busy with them. And you'll see, they, they, uh, it's easy to cook cubes. <laughs> I was going to do the balls, but I'm like, yeah, this is so much easier. You just turn them, just turn them, uh, 45 degrees at a time. So you can see there, they're getting nice and brown and crispy. That one's really brown and crispy. It looks really nice. And just turn them over. And they're still all together. They do not fall apart at this point. That means we did a good job cooking them in the front part and the, in the first part. And we're going to speed up the process here a little bit. And just go through and you can see. Turn, turn, turn. Let them crisp up. As they crisp up, keep turning them. You want to give, you know, give them a few a minute or two on each side. And, and that's usually pretty much what it takes at this point. So looking great and at this point we are crisping the outside and just heating up the inside the mac and cheese is already cooked we're just frying it up and making it look good and getting that cheese all nice and melty again on the inside so this does take a little bit of time it probably takes about I'd say eight to 10 minutes total from the time you put the first uh, mac and cheese bite down, about eight to 10 minutes. And once you're done though, it is good to go and you can heat these up afterwards like nothing. All right, so they are just about done. You can see almost every side is fried up nicely 
and you don't want to get every single side super brown you just want to get them all fried up just enough to so that it's crispy all the way around you can even turn them up on the tops like this which I did uh, all the way around and just get them to where they're nice and crispy and you'll know when they're nice and hot inside too these things are about done a couple more turns and that's it they're ready to go let's go check them out Mac and cheese, baby. Yankee Doodle came to town riding on a pony, put a feather in his cap, and called it Fried Mac and Cheese Bites. That's right. That's this is definitely American. Come on. It's got to be, right? <laughs> exactly. All right. Enough talking. Let's dig in. I have got to crack one of these in half and see what it looks like inside. Hold on. Let me just grab one. And just give it a nice, oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. All right, you got to see this up close. I'm bringing it. I'm bringing it to you. Look at that cheesy goodness. Yeah. <laughs> are you kidding me? These are so easy and beautiful looking and I gotta pop one in, hold on. Mm. You hear that crunch? Mm, mm, mm. Mac and cheese, fried, crunchy exterior. That is ridiculous. Okay, this is my new favorite little appetizer that I'm gonna make all the time because it is so good. So easy. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That's like a little meal in itself. I can eat all these. I probably could, but I'm not going to. But wow. That is ridiculous. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Phenomenal. Everybody, thank you for stopping by. Hope you guys have a great 4th of July with your families and friends. Stay safe. Enjoy the fireworks. Have a couple of beverages. Eat some mac and cheese bites. And have a lot of fun. So, have a great day, everybody. And we'll keep on cooking. Big Cat, out. <laughs>